You've probably heard the phrase that nice guys finish last. Well, I recently sat down and talked to Mr. Marlon Gibbons, a composer, a friend, a fellow YouTuber. Heck, you've probably already subscribed to his channel. You absolutely should. But he proves that authenticity and genuine positivity and just basically being an all-around nice person can and will absolutely lead to success. Plus, we're going to listen to a cue written by you, a member of the 52 Cues family, a funky, R&B, soulful kind of cue on this week's episode of the 52 Cues podcast. What is happening, everybody? This is Dave Croft. Thank you so much for joining me for another episode of the 52 Cues podcast. I'm so glad you found me, however you found me. What is 52 Cues? Well, we are a diverse, interactive community of composers and producers devoted to writing better production music through lifelong learning, mutual support, and encouragement to others along their journey, starting and focusing on writing just one cue per week. Uh, speaking of 52 Q's community, I cannot wait to share with you what is coming up next for 52 Q's and 52Q's.com. You definitely don't want to miss next week's podcast. I'm going to unpack everything that I've been cooking over the last several months, so be sure to tune in next week for that. Uh, before we get started, I definitely want to give a word of thanks to my Patreon patrons whose support helps keep this channel going. Lots more about my Patreon Patreon at the end of the video. And uh, also, if you want to skip over my interview with Mr. Marlon Gibbons, you can check out the timestamps below and you can get into the Q breakdown that I'm going to be listening to today. This is Say What, uh, not So What, that's a different song. This is Say What by Chris Moser, and you definitely don't want to miss that. But you can check out the timestamps at, at the description below. So before I roll the interview, I just want to say that... Um, that I have looked up to Marlon for so long. He was absolutely an inspiration for this channel, what he does on his channel, just being his real, true, authentic self, talking to you, the YouTube audience, was a real inspiration for me. So I was really excited when uh, when we kind of started up a friendship as uh, as uh, mutual YouTubers and mutual composers, and uh, we've really just been hitting it off. And uh, I wanted to talk to him and share his thoughts with how being just genuine and being authentic can really, really help in your career as a composer, as a creative, and and just just as a human being. So here is my recent interview with Marlon Gibbons. I am so happy to be joined by, what I'm, and I'm just going to say it, Marlon, you're one of the nicest guys I've ever met. I mean, you, you live up, you embody everything that Americans think about Canadians. You embody that. You are friendly. You're humble, and I, and I know that that's that's part of who you are as a composer, and uh, you're just being uh, an easy guy to work with. And uh, I'm so honored. Uh, I'm honored to have you on the podcast. And I'm honored to even call you a colleague. Dare I say a friend? I love that we've. Oh, you say that. We we've started up this kind of youtuber kind of friendship and uh it's 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 so cool to have you here thank you so much for joining me i'm beyond flattered thank you i mean yeah <laughs> and, and, and your beard game oh i'm working i'd be, I, I like to think that's my influence absolutely, absolutely. it's my uh it's my last year or so kind of fun project <laughs> I don't. I don't know how long it'll stay, but hey, it's your hey, friend. No, no, man. I, I, of course, you know, I, I dig it. Of course, you have you have a little bit more up top than I do, so so I, mine's, mine's a little bit more of an excuse. My forehead but. is growing, though. My forehead is yeah. I'll but uh, but, kind of but if you haven't already, please go to Marlin's YouTube channel because there are a handful of YouTubers who were really influential to me early on. Um, and I've talked about, you know, several of them, uh, on the YouTube, on my, my YouTube channel already, but Marlon, your channel had, and your videos have such an authenticity, such a genuine quality to them. There was no bravado. There was no ego. There was just a, a producer, composer 
talking into the camera, sharing life, sharing their experience, and just openly like, here, this is for you. And uh, it had a it had a profound impact on me and made me, hear me, it's just, we, and, and for listeners, we'll, we'll get over the love fest here in just a moment, but it, it, it honestly made me want to be a better YouTuber. All right. So, so much of what I do sitting in my studio, talking to the camera, uh, is, is a result of seeing you do your thing. So that's okay. That's enough gushing a little, <laughs> little YouTuber crush. I'm, I'm done. I'm over it, but my ego is all inflated. <laughs> style. Yeah. Um, thank you, man. I, I really appreciate Just, that. Yeah, a- absolutely. And I mean, and, and not to mention you have the credits to boot the bachelor, uh, access Hollywood, the view, the amazing race, master chef dancing with the stars. So you're no slouch in the production music world either. And, uh, one of the things that I think is really interesting for our listeners is, how you got there. We all have different paths. I've done a whole episode on different paths, and I would love for you to share your path to production music and as a full-time production music composer. Um, yeah, it's, um, well, thank you for asking. Um, I'll, I'll explain it kind of in two parts because the, the channel is something that kind of happened not really by accident, but there wasn't the motive. There wasn't a specific motive um and then of course the rewards to the channel which i'll touch on too were completely unexpected so as far as my path my career into uh, you know whether we want to call it sync licensing or or production music or or library music a million different names right but but basically writing music for tv both scripted and non-scripted and um, dramas and indies and all that stuff how i started was completely by accident. Uh, a friend of mine sent me uh, a, a link and it was a contest. It was an entry to a contest and it was for, uh, I'm not a big gamer, but I guess gamers would know the Sims franchise. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. The little, the little tiny people that you can boss yeah. around. <laughs> they like far- yeah. They had like farm and all these different kind of uh, uh, models. And it, it was that franchise and they were doing what was called space station sim and uh i not a big gamer but i recognize it and at the time it was coming out on playstation 2 and i thought well that that sounds kind of cool and um so and i had always been in writing and, and composing uh with no again at that time there was no libraries there sorry i didn't know what they were i didn't know mm-hmm. they exist i was just creating music because i loved it um and what happened was I entered the contest and I entered an orchestral piece. Um, and before sample libraries, most of it was pieced together with like an old Korg Triton and, uh, you know, some Roland uh, modules, hardware modules and, um, it, and you know, what I could add for organic instrumentation and that kind of thing. And I entered the contest and then kind of forgot about it. Uh, and, I was notified weeks and weeks later, uh, I actually won. I won the contest. I don't know how many entries that were. <laughs> Maybe I was the only one. Because <laughs> if I listen to that piece now, it's, oh, wow. But, um, and this is years ago, this is like, to maybe 2004, 2005. Um, so before Facebook, YouTube, and that stuff. Uh, and what happened was, so I won. And part of that was they send you, a, a of course, a, a sync fee, a licensing fee. And um, I was ecstatic because it's the first time I had been paid and significantly for them to use my, um, use my track on their video game. So I, I milked that for the longest time, um, not knowing what I was going to do with that. I was just so, (laughs) it was my first placement and it was on a notable video game on a, you know, a decent platform. Um, And I was just beside myself. This is amazing. Um, how do I do more of this? Where Where is there more of these kind of opportunities? Because it was a contest. So it's not like I was going to go Google, you know, contests to have your music placed on. There was nothing. So there was very little resources because, as I said, there wasn't, you know, these Facebook groups and forums and, um, you know, these platforms just weren't – either they didn't exist or they weren't what they are today. So YouTube was not there. What was that? 
2006, 2007. When did YouTube really? Uh, some, that sounds that sounds right. Yeah, it, I mean, I can, I can look it up. <laughs> that's fine. But the point the point I'm making is just that I really didn't know where to find out about more of this. Um, at the time, there was a platform called Broad Jam, I think it was, and you could host your your tracks and music on there. Um, so I did that. And basically just started snooping around. I, I had heard of, of uh, royalty-free, um, you know, websites, music and stuff, but still didn't really have an understanding of it. Just that, you know, people would pay a small fee to, um, you know, use your, your, use your music. And, and I fell into the whole royalty-free. Well, you only hear the word free and you think, you know, it, it's a lot of people don't really understand what royalty-free actually means, right? Right. Like, yeah, oh, it's not fr- not free to use. You're just not going to collect a ton of back end. Exactly. Yeah. Um, so anyway, the the point I'm trying to make is I went down so many of these paths, um, knocking on doors and, you know, dead ends, rejections. Um, but I was learning as I was going. Um, you know, I learned a lot about etiquette and, you know, what to, what to say, what not to say. I learned a lot about the terminology. Um, I learned a lot about rejection. Um <laughs> it's a big, it's a big lesson and it, it has stayed the course the whole time. The rejection never goes away ever at, at any level. And I think it's important for people to understand that too. So it's, it's about how you deal with that. So early on, I adopted kind of this, uh, not philosophy, but just if I got rejected, I tried to pull something positive out of it. It's easier said than done, of course. Right. Um, but you know, if, if there was feedback, then I, I listened to what that feedback was and was it valuable and have multiple people been saying the same thing, right? Maybe there's something there or, um, you know, just try to learn from it. Always, always be gracious and, and respond and say, thank you for the opportunity. Thank you for your time listening to my music. Even if it's a no, I still appreciate your time, right? It's just for whatever reason wasn't working for them. Um, and as you well know, Dave, it, there could be a million different reasons, and it doesn't have to be because your music sucks. It, sometimes it can, but <laughs> a lot of times it's it maybe just doesn't work with the bigger picture of what they're doing. Uh, it's not always about quality, but um, I went down the I went down this path and learned a lot, made a lot of mistakes. Um, it, the one bridge I burned <laughs> early on is you know I. I prepped this email and I tried to be brief, um, really, really, you know, tell them what I was hoping to bring to the table value wise. I did my research. Um, I thought I checked off all those boxes, uh, and I spelt their name wrong. Oh, (laughs) whoops. And it was just more like an A and E versus an E and A, or it was something really, really simple, but it doesn't matter. I spelt their name wrong. And that was what they saw and responded with, correcting me to the proper spelling of their name. And at that point I had no defense. I mean, that was just, it was an honest mistake, but they had me like, what do you, how, how do you reply to that with humor or with uh, you know, I'm so sorry, but they got me. So just little things like that with, with attention to detail. Right. Um, yeah, m- m- most of those kind of lessons can only be learned by committing errors like that. Yeah. Like you will never misspell somebody's name again. No. And that was it. It was just like, they got me. I, oops, move on. So um, I went down a lot of these paths. I started meeting people um, and not even necessarily working relationships, but other composers in the industry. Uh, I was lucky enough early on to kind of find a mentor. Uh, and it was just somebody who I reached out to and really admired their their music. It, it was undeniable. It was awesome music, mostly orchestral, but just incredible I complimented them on it because, well, they deserve to be complimented on their work. And uh, we ended up striking up a a friendship and I I come to learn how successful they really were without showing their credentials. Um, Super humble guy. John Hunter is the guy's name, Um, but just a great, great person. Um, Great guy has taught me so much in this industry and, I don't know how many years later now, almost 15 years, we've, we're still, we're great friends. I've, you know, um, flown down a few times to see him and, but that was a big thing. So 
having a mentor really, really helped a lot. Um, but the more I would kind of solicit and pitch my music to these different libraries at all different qualities of libraries and um, in, in different places and different contracts and um, some would reject me and some would take in the stuff, but they were horrible contracts or they would just sit on a shelf. All those things we, uh, like I was guessing, I really still had no um, real focus on what I was doing. This is in the first few years. Um, I, I was still kind of, okay, well that worked and that didn't. Um, I was signed up with a, a pro. I did that early on my Canadian pro here. So can, um, and you know, then started to learn a little bit more about how the industry really works and royalty free versus rights managed and all these little things that just over time I, I started to learn. Um, and you know, ab about how important brevity is when you're reaching out to somebody and, and researching who they are and what they do and how they got where they are, if you want to work with them. Right. Um, so over time, years, relationships, um, I started to get better as a composer, of course, because I was putting more time in and effort, um, and th this is before the whole master class movement, right? So again, a lot of what I was learning was just from trial and error. And I slowly started to get placements. I think my very first uh, royalty check was $6. Actually, I know that it was <laughs> <laughs> living the dream right there. <laughs> um, and, uh, and it was actually, um, there was a show on years ago called Art Attack. It was a Disney affiliate you know, so of course I, Disney, I got a, a Disney, Disney placement, you know, and spin hype, you know, and the truth is it, it's, yeah, Disney owns the, the, the channel, but it's, um, it just, it was a fun kids kind of show. Um, and, uh, so then the placement slow, slowly started to grow, but again, over time, it didn't happen overnight. And it's not like the floodgates opened overnight either. It's not like, you know, it was three or four years, and then all of a sudden, um, it was still a, a, an up and down um, thing where the placements would grow, and then you know you get your next quarterly statement and be like, "What happened? What? <laughs> I, I thought I was climbing." And so, you learned so, so did you? Uh, did you have a, a day gig along the way, or did you have you know a sugar mama like <laughs> helping you out? I had I had the day gig, so. Um, I went to school when I, I just to give a, a little bit of backstory. Um, most of my family is from the East Coast here in, in in Canada, the Maritimes. So growing up, my father was a sailor. He he sailed the the Great Lakes, the grain ships, and and that kind of thing. So during the summer, we would go east and um, just kitchen parties, you know, just the music, the mandolins and the, and the squeeze boxes and the guitars and the fiddles and, um, bluegrass folk country. That was, that was what I grew up around immersed in it. So uh, there would always be an instrument lying around. So I learned to play not well, but I learned to play a lot of different things, um, and pick them up. And then all through high school, I, I played, um, until the, the recording equipment came in and then that that changed everything. And this is very primitive. So it was like band in a box, Atari, mm -hmm. old school stuff. Right. Um, and then after high school, I went to school for, uh, I, I, I don't read music. Um, not, not well anyway. So I wasn't ro Royal conservatory trained. Um, so going to school for performance was out of the question. So what I did do was found a school that taught, um, production music, you know, music production and engineering. So recording, that's what I ended up going to school for. Did that, um, graduated that, come home, still needed a day, a day job. I was still, I don't know, 22 at the time, 23. So I got a job uh, locally in a factory, driving forklift, loved it. In the evenings, I would do music um, on the weekends, play gigs, uh, played live music and uh life was good. Like it, it was great. And keep in mind, again, in the beginning, I was just writing music for me. There was no objective. It wasn't, I'm going to do this full time and it's going to be, I was just happy, blissful in, in what I was doing. It wasn't until that video game that it kind of, the money, money sign kind of went, Oh, I, this is something. So, 
Um, I've always had a musical background, uh, went to school for it. And then, like I said, the video game kind of happened. I was doing the day job thing. I was doing gigs on the weekend. But as I said, over those few years where I was starting to pull on that ball of yarn to, um, <laughs> horrible analogies, but no, yeah, I get it. <laughs> um, you know, learning about the industry, uh, which again, really wasn't what it is today. Um, that I made more connections and relationships and started to have a little bit more success. And as I said, there was always a rejection along the way, but I was focused on the, the success, what was working. Um, and you still learn from what's not working, right? So I just, I won't do that again or I'll do right. it. Now, uh, you mentioned that the the industry is not the same today. And of course, you know, the in internetification of the entire industry, especially in the production music world where files are delivered electronically. Now it's no longer, you know, stacks of CDs or vinyl that uh, that production houses are using. It's all search engines. So what would you say to a uh, uh, a, a composer on the front end of their career looking to get into this now. Maybe they're watching my channel. Maybe they're watching your channel. Uh, what what advice would you give them starting out right now? I, I think there's um, be genuine, be honest. If if what you're doing has a brand, so you're a band, or you have a um, you know a different image, a name, or something, then that's fine. Of course, present that, but. I think being genuine and being yourself um, early on, I tried to create this, this hype thinking that, well, that's, that's what it's going to take to impress people. And anybody who is in a position um, professionally to, you know, license your music or get them placed, they're not buying into that. They, they can see right through it. They, <laughs> they, they listen to thousands and thousands of, of tracks. They just, they know what's good and they can hear it. So there's no, forget the hype, uh, just be genuine. And of course, promote your wares and, and what you've done and accomplishments and your wins. Uh, I don't want it to sound like I'm, I'm, I'm saying, you know, just hide and my stuff. <laughs> what I mean is, is just be genuine, be honest, um, leverage kind of to what you were saying, leverage the internet for all it's worth social media. Um, reach out to these, these, they all, I'm saying they, uh, music libraries and publishers, most of them have a presence on social media, whether it's Facebook or Twitter or Instagram or whatever the hottest thing is. Most of them have presence there. Um, connect with them, engage with them. Um, put your stuff out, w what you can and what you're comfortable with um, putting out. Um, show, show behind the scenes, show what you're doing and what you love to do and what you're really good at doing. Um, I, I think the internet being what it is today is is such an invaluable tool that I, I don't think is leveraged enough. Um, it, we're all on social media, of course, but when I started, it wasn't what it is today. So I, I was mailing CDs, um, you know, and and half of them, half of them wouldn't work because <laughs> you burned them yourself, you know, on your uh, on your your home computer, and one one works and the other doesn't. And uh, but um, yeah, and and. Yeah, I was doing the the letter, the the typing in the, in the snail mail, um, that kind of stuff. Uh, eventually, I was I would go to different places and knock on doors and and meet people, shake hands. Um, that that was really really helpful. Um, it's a bit more of an investment, but in the end, it's it's really worth. And that and that's one of those things that's I think tougher to do in the internet age is that relationship because it, you know, knocking on doors now is shooting an email. And how do you have, you know, that relationship when there are screens separating, separating yeah. the publisher and the composer or fellow composers, like, like what we're doing right here. I, I don't, I think just my opinion, I think that there's, you're going to get different situations too, where some, um, you know, publishers and music supervisors. And I mean, there's so many different people in those, those positions, right. That with, with different titles, but I'm just saying publishers and uh, music soups, but some of them like email because then they control that conversation. Or if they even want to have the conversation as opposed to someone cold calling or knocking on the door. Whereas I've, I've seen panels and so forth where um, a lot of people in those positions prefer to see and engage and meet people. So it's, it's really hard to say. I, 
I kind of feel like it might be an individual hmm. uh, reference. Um, I, I've had that experience where you know, we've had great conversations with people and it, you engage on a different level as opposed to an email trying to convey you know, humility and, and what you, what you do and, and that kind of thing. Um, there's always, we've all sent those emails where you go, Oh, that might not sound like I meant it. Um, well, you know, I've shared my own typo story, except I used the wrong publisher's name, okay. <laughs> like straight up. I called the dude by the wrong name. <laughs> so uh, I would much rather have a typo over just actually using the wrong name. <laughs> no kidding. So, I, I think anybody starting out right now, um, definitely just just be aware that this social media it's free. It's you're not paying an ad firm, you're not paying a, a, a sync agent um, or, or anybody like that. It's it, it's free as far as your your cell phone bill or your your internet bill. But um, you know, reach out to these companies and and um, find them on social media, engage with them, and it doesn't even have to be transactional in the sense that. Um, you know, I, I want something. So I'm doing this, you know, like, um, I I think, I think that's, that's so key. You can't approach a client publisher music. You can't approach them with, this is what I want you to do for me. Right. I think I don't, you you need to, you approach them as this is what I can do to help you either solve a problem or, 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 uh, or, or, or bridge a gap, or this is how I can help you. And that's, it's a mindset shift. And, and it goes from working with collaborators or, or relationships with clients or music supervisors or libraries that you're pitching to. You can't approach them wanting something from them. I agree 100%. And it's, it's, it's an old, old, old business practice model it's bring value to the table solve like you said solve a solution or provide a solution solve a problem mm-hmm. um I, it's so important and you're you're basically approaching these people to partner with them it's not about what they can do for you it's together you're going to get the music placed generate maybe a sync fee licensing back end and whatever those contracts work but the, the point is together because they have the connections to the industry, you have the product, you have the music, you're working together. So you're bringing value to the table, but they have something you don't. So, yeah. you know, show, show humility and, and, you know, work together as opposed to, you know, yo, check out these tracks. These you need to, you know, you're not. Yeah. In- and if you tell me that they're no good, then, then screw you. And yeah, yeah. And, and I think this is one of the through lines, which, I, I feel it's why you have, you know, 5,000 plus YouTube subscribers and all of the success that you have is because you definitely have kind of a, a nice guy, nice guys finish first type of, of, of a mentality. And uh, it absolutely comes out. And it's no surprise that you're successful in a full-time composer. It's no surprise at all. Thank you. I, I mean, I... I just try to be honest and then there's no there's no facade to try and keep if you met me on the street this is this is what you get like there's no um you know there's no character it's, it's <laughs> but I, I'll be honest I mean I know I don't resonate with everybody if that's that's fact it's not statistically possible right <laughs> um, but and that's okay there's nothing there's nothing wrong with that I'm sure there's people that you know I get I get the haters or the the trolls and 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 that's fine. It doesn't, I don't lose any sleep over it, but, uh, and, and the same thing, I I've had opportunities where I've pitched to certain jobs or, um, you know, opportunities and it just doesn't work or they're, you know, you don't hear anything back at all or, okay, no, nope. yeah. I, I wasn't a fit. That means that there's somebody out there who's a better fit and, 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 uh, let them be blessed and affirmed. And I'm going to keep, you know, pointing my my boat in a positive direction and uh and i think you know in in today's climate in today's you know we talk about the internet let's talk about kind of the ugly side of that which is the 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 polarization whether it's politically or or whatever you know uh i I know at least here in the u.s but i imagine elsewhere i've seen trucker convoys and stuff you know coming from canada um but positivity you know and just and just focusing on, on, on lifting, lifting each other up. And, um, that, that's, you know, together we are better. It's what, it's what I've said. And, uh, it's, it's quite literally, you know, what you're about. 
is well thank you it's it's true but it, it it's rewarding to me too so it's not completely selfish a uh, selfless it's like when you help somebody help a friend or or connect them with somebody or make it and and they win they in you know they they get their first placement or whatever that win or success story is i feel good about that i i feel great about that um and i said this in in a video long long time ago i don't know that i've ever lost a job because i've helped somebody out if mm -hmm. if i introduce somebody to one of the publishers i work with um you know and they go on to have success with them maybe it's happened I, i'm just unaware of it on uh, unaware of it if it has happened but I don't know that I've lost work or a job or, or a success, you know, a win because I've helped them. Um, and there's been lots of publishers that um, I've introduced people to that have gone on to done, you know, gone on to, to have success with them. Um, I, I just, I believe that I genuinely believe that helping people around you within reason, of course, but um, helping people around you, is a great thing. And it, it comes back. And, uh, I, again, I've had so many, um, just really great messages. Hey, Marlon, by the way, I've uh, been watching your YouTube channel for however long I just got my first placement or whatever that success story is, or just nice comments and having connected with people around the globe, literally, um, you know, across the States, the UK, like it's just great people. And that's why I was going to say when we started this this video here is that um, one of the best things that's happened because of my channel is the people I've met. Um, and it, it like really I around the world, so many great people. And I've I've actually got jobs from the channel as well because I've connected with people that way. But um, just the network of, of people and how the industry has grown in the past however long I've had my channel too, uh, that's certainly helped. But um, yeah, I mean, well, this conversation right now is, is a direct result of your authenticity and that having an impact on, on somebody else, you know, <laughs> way, way down in Florida and you're up in Canada and, you know, sharing like pictures about, hey, I'm hanging out by the pool and I'm in my flip flops and you'll sit in a picture and it's a frozen tundra land up here. And, uh, and, and yeah, and, and I think, I think the world needs more of that. I think the industry needs more of that. And, uh, and yeah, nice guys finish first. I think that's going to be the title. I think it's going right. to be the title because it's, it's so important. Now, obviously we're using, just want to, we're using guys, you know, you know, uh, gender, genderlessly, but uh, yeah. nice guys, nice gals finish first, focus on being genuine and authentic. Uh, there, there's a fine line between like hyping yourself and and being proud of your accomplishments but not you know not being boastful about them i i've always it's worked for me to to support everybody else's wins and gen, genuinely like not not for any reason not like hidden you know i, I think i love seeing my friends have success and whether it's getting their you know first 2000 placements or their first placement or mm -hmm. at any, every level. And that's something I, I think too, again, just a, a personal choice, but I, I think people should celebrate their wins I, and, you know, um, put it out there and, and be proud of that. And I don't think whether it's, again, whether it's your first placement or you've been doing it for years and you get, you know, more placements. Um, we see it a lot in our group of, of this community kind of thing where, people will post their, their placements and stuff. I think that's a great thing. And I love seeing my fellow composers, um, you know, post where they're getting their music placed. A hundred percent. Yeah. And, and you, and, and, and speaking of community, you've, you know, you've joined us over in the 52 Q's community. Uh, you've joined us over where, where 52 Q's is going and, uh, your, your support has been, has been absolutely wonderful. And uh, I'm so glad that you were you were able to uh, to to join us today. And uh, man, I wish you all the success, and I wish you the absolute best. And if you haven't already, please stop what you're doing right now. Yes, close this video and go <laughs> subscribe to Marlin's channel because not only do you get you know Marlin in his various beard states, but you also. <laughs> I'm one to talk, man. But you also, uh, he who will often uh, blog and vlog 
out in the Canadian countryside. So if you want to see how truly beautiful Canada is, watch some of his videos. I mean, Florida, here in Orlando, it's pretty much, you know, one dimensional, you know, some palm trees and it's pretty much always green. But man, the Canadian countryside is amazing. Well, we like Florida too. We get yeah. down. <laughs> yes. But please go subscribe. Um, Marlon, anything you want to talk about? Any anything that's upcoming that uh that that you want to uh that you want to humble brag about? You know what, to be honest, there is not I mean I have my jobs and my like, <laughs> stuff, but I, I'm gonna keep um doing the channel and and putting out as much um you know, sharing what my experiences have been as much as I can. And if people can learn from that, that's awesome. Um, and uh, yeah, I don't, I, I have some reviews. I'm going to be doing some product reviews on the channel and um, uh, just in general, talking about sync licensing and in, in, in our industry, um, just kind of from a shared perspective kind of um, approach. But uh, yeah, no, I'm just, I'm, life is good. I'm just yeah. making, and, and sharing um, kind of what I can, when I can, and and I don't have any big releases or anything like that coming out. Um, just just happy to be connected with people, and thank you for having me on. I really appreciate that so much. And- absolutely, absolutely. So, Marlon, thank you so much, my friend, and uh, and I know that the rest of the year is going to hold amazing things for you. And uh, so, please go check out his channel. Check out his new studio walkthrough. He just got a new studio and got everything kind of installed. And so that's all happening. Uh, But Marlon, thanks, my friend. Of course, we will have links to all of Marlon's business in the description below. But but, but right now, go subscribe to his channel. It's absolutely stellar. And what, what a nice guy. So we're going to change gears just a little bit here, and we are going to listen to Say What by 52Q's community member, Chris Moser. He says that he was writing this for a taxi listing or a publisher I'm working with, not sure yet, Funky Pop with lots of fun and attitude. So with all that having been said, let's take a listen to Say What. All right, that was 
That was Say What by Chris Moser, a member of the 52Q's community and family. And Chris, this was absolutely outstanding from from a sound uh, standpoint, uh, the sounds that you're using and the mix, it all is working so, so well. I've got so many things going on here that are all working just right out of the gate. Fantastic buildup here. I like all the claps. I seem to remember somebody mentioned in the in the in the in the thread on Facebook how the claps feel a little too reverby. I think I can agree with that. Fantastic builds. Now, as far as the say what, um, is that like a splice loop or a splice one shot? And uh, if so, uh, I mean, obviously, when you would when you get, would give this to a library, you would give them a mix without any vocals. They're going to want to insist on that. Um, but I would worry just a little bit, considering how exposed those vocal lines are. I would worry if they were just straight splice one shots dropped in because they are identifiable. And I would worry that it it might trip up an algorithm. Now, if it is, you know, if it's uh, you or your family or friends or whatever, then stellar, stellar job. Um, I wonder if... I wonder if you could find somebody to do that for you. But uh, no, this uh, this cue, this same with the oh yeah, this cue is like ready to drop into a, a a Verizon commercial or an Apple commercial or something like that. I can absolutely hear it. Fantastic layering. And oh man, and the edit points are great. The woo coming out and adding the other gear of energy, switching up, whoops, switching up the uh, the chord progression to where you have that rising energy, that rising build. Hundred percent, yes. Um, my other question is uh, the um, the brass lines. If those are played in, or did you record those yourself, or are they uh, splice splice loops? And I would I would just just tread lightly if they are splice or sounds.com or arcade or whatever, um, just because I mean they sound fabulous. But if they are not manipulated, mangled, pitched, or whatever then uh, those types of sounds absolutely will trip up content ID algorithms. Yes. Going into that breakdown, this is nice. Then hinting at the, at the chord progression, cooking. All oh, the little... This is a fantastic breakdown. Then we have a really big edit point here coming up. And this is all absolutely working. You're firing on all cylinders here. There's not one thing I would change about this up to this point. And now we get into this other section, and I, I mean, it sounds great. This section throughout here, it sounds good. It works. I don't think you need it. I don't think you need it. What I wanted to feel, because we've already done a breakdown, we've already had several edit points. What I wanted to feel was another gear of energy. Two, three, four, ten. But really, really freaking send it. Take it home here. So coming. Two, three, four. I'm, I'm trying to eyeball this. Two, three. Uh. And, and maybe just an octave. Maybe an octave, maybe their trumpets or something on top, really screaming like Maynard Ferguson style on top of that. I just don't think you need this interlude. I don't think you need this right here. 
it's cool. It's like for the extended remix or something. That's all. And if you're going to go in to this, to this breakdown, let me, let me find out uh, where that uh, other spot is. And I'm gonna, I try to eyeball this. Here we go. Like go into that. Pull the energy back and then really, really send it home from there. But I feel like it needs one other, one other gear of energy if we can give it there. I mean, really what it needs, and I don't, again, I don't know if you have access to this, it needs like a trumpet player just blasting, just blowing on top, um, like, like Maynard Ferguson just kind of comes to mind. And I would end like you did here, uh, right before we went into that, that second breakdown. And then, and you probably want to give them a solid, a solid ending. Two, three, four. Probably. Not always. But give give the editors a good solid button that they could they could edit and grab if they needed. But this thing is uh, is so syncopated as it is. I, I'm not convinced you absolutely need it. But but really really nice work. This was a stellar stellar job. Uh, it's one of the reasons I I wanted to to feature this. I would love to know. And if if this doesn't get forwarded, then what are we doing here? Assuming that you know it's meeting the uh, the criteria of the uh, of the brief. But there is this is so commercial ready that it, it hurts inside. So really, really top notch. Uh, like I mentioned, this queue was submitted into our week 11 uh, queue over at 52Qs.com where we we push or we uh, post our cues for feedback. We provide feedback. We receive feedback. That's what 52 Qs is all about. That's what the community is about. Like I said, got a lot happening uh, with 52 Qs in the next couple of weeks that uh, I will be talking and sharing uh, with you next week on the next week's on next week's podcast. But uh, if you want to go ahead and join the Facebook group, you can get a sneak peek about what is coming up next at 52Qs.com. Uh, like I said, uh, I would not be able to do any of this without the support of my Patreon's patrons, who, who whose actual giving of their real life money helps keep things like what's going on at the new 52Qs.com. It makes all of that possible. If you want to be a patron, it's just one dollar a month, and it uh, not only helps to support the channel, but you also get access to my weekly music production live streams. We have a live stream. Uh, just this evening coming up, uh, if you're watching this on a Thursday, and we are going to be starting a brand new queue. And so, so yeah, information about that, uh, you can head over to patreon.com slash Dave Croft and join up. And if you don't want to do any of that, that's, that's totally okay as well. If you don't want to subscribe, if you don't want to do anything with uh, the Patreon, that's okay. If you just want to click on the video and receive, I welcome you into our our midst. But that's going to do it for me today. I so very much appreciate you. I can't wait to talk to you next week about what's coming up at 52 Qs, and we will feature another Q written by a member of the 52 Qs family. But that's going to do it for me. Until next time, peace. The 52 Qs podcast is copyright 2022 Dave Croft, all rights reserved. The music played on the podcast is copyright of their respective owners and is used for educational purposes only. For more information, including joining the 52 Qs community and submitting your cue for consideration on the podcast, head over to 52Qs.com. <laughs>